What's up guys, it's Adam with RC Logger and today we are going to do a tutorial on how to use your one link with your stock transmitter and the RCI1 Extreme. This uh, one link will also work with the RCI1S, just a little bit of a smaller multi-rotor platform, but it will work with the both of them. Uh, before I get started, uh, what tutorial would be complete without a shameless plug? So I have for you the RC Logger Solar Power Charger. Um, it's a real nice little solar panel. Uh, you can plug USB into it, you can plug your cell phone into it, you can charge RCI1S batteries off of it. Uh, it's got different voltage selectabilities, so it's a real nice little guy. It's, uh, I think it's like 20 some dollars. You can pick it up at rclogger.com. Okay, on to the tutorial. Uh, but what I'm gonna need is my stock transmitter, and I'm gonna need to make sure that I have a new model assigned, and I'm gonna also need to make sure that the channel switches that I decide I want to use with the one link are actually moving when I flip the switch. In other words, uh, on most electronic radios, there is a, a servo monitor or a monitor that allows you to see the movement that you give um, digitally on the screen when you move a stick. And also when you flip a switch, you can actually see a little arrow slide. What you wanna do is make sure that none of your switches are inhibited. And you wanna make sure that when you flip the switch, you can verify that the slider is moving within the digital uh, readout of your transmitter. That's really important because once you go through the setup procedure, if you think you have a switch that is free and you flip the switch and it doesn't get recognized by the one link, then uh, obviously you're gonna have an issue. Uh, minimum of six channel radio, guys. That's really important as well. You can have an eight channel, you can have as many, you know, as many channel above six that you want but the one link will not work with anything less than a six channel radio. Um, for all intents and purposes, I have my batteries already installed, but I'm going to pull this one and show you the proper setup procedure. For starters, make sure your transmitter is off if you're using Spectrum. Other transmitters, they will re be required to be on. It just depends on what that manufacturer's specifications are. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have the right cord selected. Uh, for Spectrum, this is a uh, stereo style cord. I'm going to plug it into the trainer port on my transmitter, and it's going to turn my transmitter on automatically. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the battery into my one link. And I've already done this setup, but for the first time you do this, it's going to enter automatically into the setup mode. Um, if it doesn't enter into the setup mode, there's three small buttons on the other side. The lowest most button is the link button. You're going to hold it down for three seconds until you hear a beep. Just like that. That means that the one link is now ready to begin its programming sequence. What I'm going to do next is assign channels and the one link is going to register what channel. The first channel I'm going to do is the throttle channel. I always start off my setup with the throttle in the lowest position. I move it all the way up and back down. I got an audible signal from the one link. It recognized that channel. Now I have two flashes. Next, I'm going to give left rudder. And now I have three flashes indicating it recognized that channel. Next is forward elevator. Four flashes. Next is left aileron. Five flashes. Now I'm going to move on to my channels. Two three position switches are what I'm using. So I'm going to flip through all three positions and then back up to the top. Next three position switch. And finally my two position switch because I have seven channels available on this radio. The last two position switch is only a toggle switch for your um, to start and stop recording for cameras like the RC Logger Pro camera. Uh, it's not a necessary switch. Uh, additionally, I know some transmitters don't have three position switches, they only have two position switches. You can use these, however, for example, the first three position switch, which is channel five that we assigned, is a switch that allows you to switch from beginner mode to intermediate mode to expert flight mode. Now obviously if you have a two position switch, you can only select two of those modes. The second three position switch that I have is for um, feature assignment that are available in the sport mode only. Uh, the two features that we have in the sport mode is the automated flip function and we also have the altitude height hold feature. Um, so you're going to be able to toggle either one or the other and then the normal flight mode. So with the three position switch, if you have it in the middle, 
that's normal flight mode. If you move the switch up, you have acro flip mode, and if you bring the switch down, you have altitude height hold. Now with a two position switch, it's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna have normal mode and either altitude height hold or normal mode and acro mode, depending on which um, trim you assign. So if you adjust your travel on that particular channel, you can get either mode to toggle depending on which way you adjust the travel. Uh, it'll take a little fi finagling uh, to understand it, but um, that's all it takes is a couple minutes and then you'll have it figured out which way it needs to go. I would detail that more, but every radio is different um, and everyone has different radios. So moving on, the one link is now ready to be bound with the extreme. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the extreme in. And I have a solid LED, solid green LED. So the next thing I need to do is prepare it to be bound. And in order to do that, I'm going to hold down the bind button, which is located next to the battery plug for three seconds. And now I have red green flashing. That means the extreme is ready to be bound. On the one link, I'm gonna hold down the middle button for one second. I hear a beep. It's in the binding process. I let it go and it is now bound to the extreme. I'm gonna take my one link. I have a little sticky Velcro. I'm just gonna slap it onto the back and now I'm ready. So the next thing I can do is go through a quick verification process to make sure everything is working correctly. First, I'm going to calibrate my gyros because that needs to be done after you've gone through the one link setup. In order to do that, you're gonna move your control stick up and to the right Green LED goes solid, bring it back down to the center. Green LED flashes again, indicating that it has now been calibrated correctly. I can verify that all my channels are working. I can move my aileron and elevator to the lower right hand corner to turn my LEDs on, turn them off, turn them back on. The next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my flight mode selector switch is working correctly. So that was the first, that was the fifth channel I've assigned to it. I move the switch down. Okay, what I noticed I did wrong here is I forgot to uh, put the toggle switch, the three position switch in the middle position after I completed the setup sequence. Um, if you put it into the upper position, it will be acro flip mode. If you put it into the lower position, it will actually be altitude height hold mode. So therefore, when I switched into sport mode, the LED was flashing rapidly. So this is something to keep in mind when you're doing your setup phase. Flip the switch one more time, and now I'm in the expert function and everything's working as it should. I go back into the sport mode, I can test my acro function and my altitude height hold function by flipping my three position switch. And I can be in the altitude height hold mode in order to exit the altitude height hold mode when the motors aren't spinning, just move the throttle up and back down. So now I know that all my mode switches are working correctly. And the next thing I wanna do is verify a startup process. I know my motors are spinning and I know my unit is now ready to fly. So that is the one link setup in a nutshell. Obviously for every transmitter, it's gonna be different. Um, the key is to make sure that you have switches that you can physically see moving on your uh, electronic radio. Um, and that way you'll know that when, once you go through the setup process, when you flip that switch, the one link is gonna recognize it. And it'll also give you an audible signal indicating that as well. So I hope I've done my best to cover everything for you. If you have any questions, you can find me at rclogger.com or you can find us on RC Groups. Um, we're there and we're active. So thanks very much for watching the video. Take care.